Doc, how you doing today? I am well, how are you, sir? I'm great, man. Looking forward to chatting with you. You know, let's just jump right into it. And and just for those of the people, the unfortunate people who don't quite know about you yet. Those poor bastards. I tell you what, could you give us a little overview, starting in third grade, and just work up from there a little bit about yourself? <laughs> I've always known I was dumb and wouldn't amount to much. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what you want to hear. I... Uh, I guess I guess you're supposed to start with your education at this point. This is kind of the the thing you start with. Yeah, and we'll be here forever because you've got like every known certification. Yeah, this is the worst. This is the worst question always. So it's like, uh, you know, tell me your resume. So I, I uh, <laughs> let's just say it quickly. I, I studied kinesiology as uh, as an undergrad, um, and then uh, I went on to uh, become a chiropractor, and then followed it up with a sports specialty. So. My designation is a sports chiropractor. Um, on top of that, I've done acupuncture and blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm also a trainer, obviously. Um, and my background, uh, physical background, is uh, I've been studying martial arts since I was, I don't even remember, I mean, maybe five, mm. five years old, six years old. Um, so now I, uh, I pretty much fly around and I teach... Uh, some assessment and treatment systems, as well as a uh, as a training system. Uh, they're functional range release and functional range conditioning, and that's as as comfortable as I am with speaking about myself. Man, I and tell I'm you done. what, it's uh, yeah, it's I'll go ahead, you know, and and later if anybody if anybody's interested in really getting the full info about about the doc here, we'll go ahead and post it up here. Pretty impressive stuff, and I mean. We were just talking before we started recording. Uh, we feel like we've known each other for so long, but yeah, this is the first time we've ever really talked. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, let's I, just... only know you by, I only know you by your little icon. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like you know each other, but I wouldn't. Rec I only recognize your little picture. Exactly. That's how it always is, right? It's like, wait a minute. If I kind of squint a little bit, I'll know who that guy is. So I met this guy. I met this guy at one of my seminars a few weeks ago in uh, San Francisco. I forget what I was. And and I go, are you the are you the backflip guy? And he goes, what do you mean? And, it, and because in his little Facebook icon, he's doing a backflip. Yeah. So I have no idea what this guy looks like. I've spoken to him many times. So he's the backflip guy. <laughs> I've got. I mean, it's funny you mention that. One of my he's my good friends now, but forever, all I knew him was it was this it was this black guy with this football helmet on eating a huge cheeseburger. Yeah, and unless he walked around like that. Yeah, and I was gonna say, I mean, like I met him like. Well, wait a minute. Where's your helmet? And you're not black. So uh, anyway, if it's okay, I'd like to kind of talk about really how to live a better life. And you know, there's a lot of people and there's like the training systems and a lot of things out there and people want to get into a particular form of exercise. But really what it just all comes down to is how, how can we live a better life, right? And you look at at least over here in Japan and, and everywhere else on the internet, you kind of have the new fad of of the week, it almost seems nowadays. But but let's just cut to, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. And I and I'd like to hear you a little bit of your thoughts on like really what does it mean to live I don't even want to say a healthy, but like a better life. And it's something the reason I kind of bring this up is because I was listening or was watching a couple of videos that you put out and you know, you're talking uh, with some other people, another doctor, and, and you were talking about how it was actually CrossFit. And I don't want to rip on CrossFit or anything like that, but it's basically got into the point where you're speaking about, you know, you have these people who might go from the couch and, and they're an accountant or something and they sit in a chair all day long and they work in front of the computer and all of a sudden they want to just jump right into CrossFit. Unfortunately, they get injured and they're like, well, I don't know why, but obviously to us it makes sense why they're injured. But rather than thinking that we should just jump right in and do some form of exercise, what can we do from the beginning in order to help us to live a better life and gradually work up to being able to get into one of these exercise systems per se? So long lead up, yeah, run with it. You started with an easy question. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the meaning of life. <laughs> you know, I think um, for for me personally, it's. Uh, so, you know, you start studying uh, the human body and what the human body does um, from a performance standpoint. And then I got to study it from like a getting injured standpoint mm. and what do you do to prevent injuries. And I always tell people, if you're really studying the human body and you want to know 
you know, what are the keys to health? What are the keys to injury prevention? What are the keys to, to all of that? Unless you go back and study evolutionary biology, you can never really find the answer. So when somebody asks me, you know, how do you stay healthy? I always, I always look at, I call it the evolutionary perspective of health. So you ask yourself a few questions. Number one, what were we as homo sapiens naturally selected to be doing? And then number two is what are you doing? And number three is how do you compensate for the fact that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing? And when you look at those three questions, it puts everything in perspective. Yeah. So you talked about you know going to CrossFit. You go to CrossFit and then somebody hurts themselves and then everyone says, oh, CrossFit's bad. Right. Or let's say you start gymnastics mm -hmm. and, you know, you, you, you do, do a something. handstand. Let's say you jump into a handstand or something. Sorry, go ahead. But yeah. 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 And, yeah. and then you hurt yourself and you say, oh, handstands are bad. Mm -hmm. Or you put on Vibrams, you know, those ugly shoes yeah. with the toe thing. Yeah, man. And then, you know, people start hurting themselves and then they go, you know, these shoes are bad. And I, I always take the perspective. It's not that stuff that's bad. It's, 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 it's us. Mm -hmm. And it's us because we have um, a weird concept as to what health is. Like you talked about performance, for example. People look at an athlete, they'll look at someone like a hockey player, and they look at a hockey player, a baseball player, an athlete, and they say, oh, that's how you, you're healthy. Mm. You're healthy if you play sports. And I always tell people, I mean, I've assessed a lot of professional players, and I always say athletes are some of the least physically healthy people on the planet because they're doing things that are not natural for humans to do. Sure. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I'm asked all the time, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're dealing with a hockey team and they're saying, you know, we have a lot of adductor injuries, groin oh. pulls, groin strains. Why? And the answer is because you're playing hockey. Sure. I mean, you, we naturally evolved in a, in a situation where, you know, if you put sagittal plane motion into the ground, it's supposed to propel you forward. Now you put a hockey skate on, which really wasn't part of the evolutionary process, and you tell the body, forget all that. Let's start pushing out to the side to propel us forward. And then you get groin injuries and you wonder why. Or the baseball pitcher yeah. you know, with baseball teams and they're like, how do we prevent medial elbow injuries? <laughs> Quit like, baseball. Well, don't be a pitcher. Yeah. I mean, those things are not – I mean that's not what we are naturally selected to be doing. What are we naturally selected to be doing? We're really naturally selected to get up, hunt and gather mm. – have sex, mm -hmm. sleep, and then repeat the process, mm -hmm. which means we're technically evolved to be moving constantly. Now, the fact that we're not doing that, the fact that you get up, you sit in a chair, we have a podcast in front of a computer. <laughs> I mean, when people get injured, like neck pain and back pain, I don't know why people are so surprised. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, no, uh, I totally, totally get what you're saying. And... Almost as if we've all become complacent in thinking that, you know, well, it reminds me kind of like the thing where the McDonald's thing where a person burns their their lips on hot coffee and then sues someone because the coffee was hot. Well, no shit. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. You know, just what you're saying. And so to me, it totally makes sense. But it's it's just so interesting that we see so many people nowadays just they just can't believe what's going on in their body and all, you know. I should be able to do something. Well, not if you don't take care of your body, not if you don't move, like you said, you know, not if you sit in a chair all day, not if, you know, you eat Krispy Kremes every single day, you know, whatnot. So it makes total sense to me. So, well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, you're saying eat Krispy Kremes. It's like, yeah, you, you introduce your body, which has through millions of years of evolution been getting ready to deal with certain food stuffs. And now you start introducing foodstuffs that are not really foodstuffs. Mm. They're fake food. And then you wonder why you have this prevalence of, of, of obesity or you sure. have this prevalence of all these problems. Um, it, it's just because, you know, you're, you're doing you're, – it's like we live as if we're a different species or we're uh, not a, yeah. another animal. Like we, we, we think that uh, the rules don't apply to us, for example. And I'll give you another good example just to, to point out how people think. It's like – you can have a family, and it happens to me all the time. You'll have a family, and their child might be obese, which is obviously a big problem. And you know, you you ask them, "Do you have a dog?" And they say yes. And I say, "Well, how often do you take your dog out?" They say, "You have to walk your dog every day." You say, "Why do you have to walk your dog every day?" Well, they say, "You know, to keep it healthy and to keep it from going stir crazy." 
And now I say, okay, so you have this little guy, let's say it's a little boy, and you know that for the species called dog, they need daily exercise, not only for physicality, but for mental health. And then you have your, your son, and you don't draw the same conclusion that this species of human needs to be taken out on a daily basis. And then we diagnose people with, you know, attention deficit yeah. disorders and things like that. I'm not saying that that doesn't no. happen. Sure. But... But Doc, yeah, it's okay though, because we've got Ritalin for that, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, and it's when you put it out that way, it's people are like, "Oh yeah, I never thought of it that way." But and I don't blame them. It's sure. just the way we look at humans, like exercise, for example. I always say exercise is a human invention used to compensate for the fact that we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Thank you. Yes. Like a hunter, yes. a hunter gatherer never went for a jog and said, "I need my cardio today." <laughs> They just said, get the hell away from this tiger before it yeah. kills me, and that's it, right? So it's just I, – I think the, the more advanced we get, the f we, we keep, we're forgetting that our mm. body hasn't really physically evolved all that much in thousands and thousands of years. And if, if we're not doing what we're kind of set out to do, then your health falters. So then – so what do we do then? So, for example, let's say we have we have Tom, and and you know Tom works as an accountant, and he does the nine to five. You know yeah. he's married, he has two kids. You know he's a busy dude, and yeah. you know when he was in up until college, he was exercising and whatnot. But you know over the past ten years or so, he's been so busy trying to build, you know his business or whatever he's doing, he hasn't really done it. How do we get back? How do we get back? And I don't even want to say reclaim, <clears throat> just how do we get back to really being a normal human, if you will, you know, what are, what are, what do we need to do? You know, I don't know that we can, like, I, I hate to be doom and gloom, but mm -hmm. I think the first realization is that this is not normal. Mm -hmm. Like there's no good way for me to tell a patient how to sit at a desk. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, there's just no good way to do that. Um, so I think the, the, the realization has to be you're already causing damage by, by just I existing in civilization. <laughs> so once people understand that, they understand the – it almost puts into perspective the importance of constantly trying as best as humanly possible. Like I don't want to resort back to hunter-gatherer days. Sure, trust sure, me. sure, sure. You know what I mean? But sure, as sure. much as you can, you have to try to – mimic the environment and people take this way like the wrong way all the time they, they whenever somebody brings up the word evolution they always think like you, you know you want someone to only eat uh right. raw meat yeah, and, and, I, yeah. and never wear shoes and whatever right. i'm not saying that what i'm saying is i mean the if you look at the human body it's very apparent what keeps us healthy take a human joint for example there's only one way for a human joint to maintain health there's no other way other than movement. Movement, right. If you don't move that joint repeatedly, that joint breaks down. Now, someone would say, where's the proof? The proof is in first grade physiology. And it's that, you know, your, your cartilage, for example, doesn't have good blood supply. Mm -hmm. So I asked someone, how does your cartilage receive nutrients? The only answer is by movement, movement and yeah. physically diffusing fluids in. Mm -hmm. So if you don't move it's not going to stay healthy. Now, let me give you an example of how we twist uh, the way humans are supposed to function. Let's say take something like neutral spine. Everyone's mm -hmm. heard of neutral mm -hmm. spine, right? For a while there, it was like we wanted our patients and clients to maintain neutral spine all the time, mm. which means have a nice lumbar curve, never get out of neutral spine. You know, you sit down, you go to take a shit. doesn't matter <laughs> what you do, neutral spine. Now, if you take a joint and you always maintain it in one position, and you ask any therapist this, is that good or bad for the joint? They'd say Tops bad for the bad, joint. Right. So then I say to them, what do you think is happening at L5S1 if you lock yourself in neutral spine all the time? And then people start to say, yeah, I guess it's not going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, where is the co most common area for degeneration or arthritis? It's at there. L5S1. I mean, it, it's... It's right there. It's, it's written in our genome, in our code. Think about movement in general. Our brain actually provides us with happy drugs mm. when we move. It gives us a, it gives us a, 
um, a benefit. It gives us a feeling of euphoria. You actually make endocannabinoids. So the same particles that are, are consumed when you smoke a joint are actually produced for you in your body when you move. They call it the exercise high, which mm -hmm. is um, mistakenly thought of as an endorphin release, and it's actually not that. It's actually a stimulation of your endocannabinoid system. And what does that mean? It means your body is telling you what you to do to, to be healthy. Right. You just ignore it completely. And, I mean, you see it all over. Look at how we raise kids. You have kids, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. so you take a kid. I always laugh at this. Any other species on the planet, what do, kid, what do the babies do when they play? They play fight. Right. They wrestle. Right. They climb. What do we tell our kids immediately as soon as they start <laughs> wrestling or climbing? Well, we except for my kids, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, kids yeah. are all over there on the chandeliers and blah, blah, blah. But, but immediately we say, hey, stop, stop fighting. being right. a normal human mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sit in a desk all day. That's like right. it's, it's so backwards. I don't remember the original question, to be honest with you. But it's just we're so far gone now that reeling people back. We were asking about what to do. Exactly, right. right. But – and the thing is, the unfortunate thing that I see happening, and maybe you'll agree with this, maybe not, but okay, and if we do look at, at the joints, okay, and you know, obviously we need to move our joints. It just makes sense to us. But then you have people who say, okay, you have to individually move every single joint and do it, you know, in a specific way and spend, you know, an hour every single day to do it. And, you know, I think that's good. You know, let's say in your case, of course, you have patients that come in and you need to physically work on them. And then, of course, give them homework, have them make sure to go home and do that, which let's be honest, most people don't do that because, you know, my students, same way. But anyway, you know, it's I think people miss the point of sometimes what people are saying is, you know, looking at the joints and having to move things and think that it has to be individual instead of broad and so what i guess my original question was you know and looking at people i think people can get so sucked in and with the information overload that they almost get scared or i don't even want to say scared but maybe confused as to what to do you know and and you pretty much nailed it in my way just be like a kid you know just freaking go outside and run and play and 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 you know try and jump and things like that um parkour whatnot but, we, but, but yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, no, no. After you go. Finish yeah. That. But then we have people who get stupid with it. And so they end up overdoing it and jumping into it too soon without being prepared. And so you're right. And so they don't have the prerequisite, um, I don't even want to say movements, but mobility before they actually do that. Right. And so that's where we maybe see people get injured. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, that's at least what I see. And so unfortunately you have these people who are like a parkour is a good example. I'm, I'm actually getting into parkour, you know, yeah. at my young age of 42 and I'm like, yeah. you know, I understand that there's certain things that if I want to do that, I got to make sure that I have the proper mobility first and the stability in that joint so that when I do it, I don't kill myself. So, you know, am I right in saying that? I don't know, but, um, you know, yeah, no, you're, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. And you use the word there. I, I lecture on this all the time at my seminars. You lose, you use the word prerequisite and it's got to be the most underutilized term in, I mean, any training environment, you never hear that word prerequisite. Like you get a group of people, 50 people in a class and you go, okay, we're all going to do snatches. <laughs> and I go, hold on here. Whoa. Because, you know, if you, if you give me 50 people to assess the number of people, let's say that there are sedentary individuals, the number of people that I would clear to do snatches would probably amount to zero <laughs> plus or minus zero. Like you, and then you were talking about, uh, Play. Okay, so getting back to what you said, get out there and play. I totally agree with you if the person has been living a life which is akin to keeping healthy joints. Mm. But you take a 30 year old, and this is where people get, this is where I think the training community is faltering now. You take a 30 year old and you give him to a trainer, and the trainer prides himself on, I'm a, I'm a functional trainer, I only do functional exercises. So we're going to start off with a Turkish getup mm. or we're going to start off with uh, a clean or whatever. And 
what I teach in, in FRC and functional range conditioning, it's actually a regression from that concept. Ah. And it's saying, okay, before we get into functional exercise, exercise that, that mimics what humans are supposed to be doing, we have to reverse the, the clock and we have to take a dysfunctional human and give them the prerequisites to be human. Yeah. If, if I may, like for example, if, if because because of like what we do here in GMB, and so we have, let's say, oh man, I don't even know. Um, actually, there was a video in which you talked about handstands, and yeah. so in something you mentioned in there, and, and bam, I was just like, yeah, because you talked about people having wrist issues, and it just makes sense. People think they're just going to kick up and be able to do a handstand or something, but if they don't have that extension of the wrist. And they load that structure, obviously they're going to get injured, right? So I guess that's what you're saying then. So instead of actually looking at that snatch, look at what's happening or what needs to happen and then take that apart and work on that joint. Is that correct? And then make Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. So I, it's almost like I'm saying – see, I always say this term. I say you can't have – you have to have articular independence mm. before you can have articular interdependence. Okay. And what people try to do is they jump right to these compound exercises uh, because they say, you know, joints work together and this mm -hmm. is and movements happen together, together, together. That's fine. But if if one of the joints that's involved in a particular movement is not working as a joint should, then the movement might happen, but something else has to take the load. Like something else has to overwork. Sure. In order for that to occur. Sure. Yeah. And we've talked about handstands, and just to uh, for people who didn't hear what I was saying. A lot of people want to do handstands now because mm -hmm. of the you know movers. Sure. For some reason, handstands have been. It's weird that handstands are the popular thing amongst movers, considering it's static. Dude, you don't even have to go there with me. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. So <laughs> I, I mean, it's fine if you want to do handstands. It's, it's a healthy thing to do. But people think that the first, and I'm not. A, I mean, this is not my realm. I, I my handstands are horrible. But people think that the first exercise that you should do to do a handstand is to get in front of a wall and propel your entire body weight over these tiny joints uh, in our wrists. And then you ask the person, well, before we do that, let me see your wrist range of motion, and they go like this. And I go, okay, so if your body obviously only trusts you to do that much, why do you think it's a good idea to propel all of your body weight on your wrist, and you think that's step one? That's step 10. <laughs> step one is, does your shoulder function like a shoulder? Mm -hmm. Does your elbow function like an elbow and does your wrist function like a wrist? Step one. Step two, do the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and I'm, I, you know, I'm only choosing three, but there's sure, more. Sure, 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 sure. But do they have the load-bearing capacity in the ranges of motion that you're forcing to be able to do what you're asking of them without getting injured? Mm. Now, if you think about the definition of injury, people, I mean, let's start with that because people really need to understand why you get injured. You get injured when the load that's being taken is greater than the load-bearing capacity of the tissue. Now, if you've never worked load-bearing of the wrist, how many people work load-bearing of yeah, the wrist? Yeah, hardly it's, anybody, right? Yeah. Hardly anybody. Grip strength is horrible now because we mm. type on these stupid yeah. keyboards. Our hands are weak. Our wrists are weak. And, you know, to the extent that people wrap their wrists <laughs> up when they're lifting, which is crazy to me why you think that's a good idea – and then we're like, you know, fuck that. Let's just propel ourselves onto our hand. And then people come to me and they go, I don't I get it. I'm doing handstand walking and my wrist hurts. But it's it's not only that. It's not only that obvious. Like I have uh, – I had a you know pa few power lifters in last week. And I mean power lifters should be good at squatting. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But when you look at – you know, you break it down and you go – you look at their hips. You look at their ankle Ankles. dorsiflexion. Yeah. And you say, you know, you don't have – the necessary dorsiflexion of your ankle to do a high bar back squat. So when you load it with 5,000 pounds and then you get hurt, you shouldn't come to me all confused. I mean, if you can't do a movement unloaded, adding load to it is a pretty dumb yeah. idea. So, I mean, it's, it's all about prerequisites. And, and like we were saying before, I think it, the, I, the, the, the trend of functional training has has gone has done worse for us because uh, we're doing it based on the assumption that our joints are working well. I always have the assumption as soon as somebody comes to see me, 
your joints, unless otherwise trained, your joints probably aren't healthy and working as they're supposed to be. And I'll give you an example. You take someone's shoulder, you put them into internal rotation. What happens? As soon as they go into internal rotation, their whole shoulder starts hiking forward. So to me, that tells me that your scapula, which is the ball, and your humerus, or sorry, this humerus, which is the ball, and the scapula, which gives the socket, they're, they're moving as one thing. So when I rotate, right. the thing, okay, so if you take, if I ask you, what's the definition of a joint? It's when two bones come together and are able to dissociate and move mm-hmm. inter- independently. That's what a joint is. It's technically the space between two bones. So if a joint, if the two bones are working as one, then you don't have a joint. And if you don't have a joint, it doesn't matter how much you practice the movements, yeah. it's not going to go well for you. And, and that's the... You know, that's the main issue I have. Yeah. I mean, that works well if you're doing, well, in my case, because I did judo for so long and I love to grapple. That's a good thing, yeah. but not a good thing when you want to be healthy, right? So, yeah, absolutely. So, so then, right, you know, right, what you said then. So basically, you know, if, if you look at a person and, you know, sorry to bring it, you know, to the GMB thing, but something that we just recently released is called Elements, and it was basically looking at, okay, You've been sedentary for so long, you might want to do all these exercises, but first let's figure out, can you actually squat down to the ground? What's keeping yeah. you from doing that? Just like you said, is it your hip? Is it your ankles? Okay, if it's that, if that's the case, then here's what we need to do in order to help you fix that. And so, you know, you know talking to you is really refreshing, of course. I mean, love your stuff and I've seen tons of it anyway, but it's, it's unfortunate that there's so much information out there that doesn't cover this right and so i i I think this is what's just wonderful i've always wanted to talk to you about this kind of thing because it just to me it's fascinating obviously i'm not a physical therapist you know i'm not a doctor or whatnot but yeah i love to move i hate using the terminology mover Uh, we always think it sounds like a person who carries furniture up flights of steps but um you know but as far as um how can a person though as a trainer, though, when is when is there too much therapy involved? I guess. Yeah, you know what? I, I, if I'm being, if 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 you're mistaking what I'm saying, I don't think that therapy necessarily is the answer. The way I do it is this, and and you're right. I have a, I'm very fortunate to be able to look at it from both sides. Mm-hmm. So I train people, but then I also deal with the injuries that come sure, out of training. Sure. Sure. Right. Um, so the prerequisites that I'm talking about are not necessarily something that I as a therapist can give someone. Mm. Okay. And I think a lot of therapists, um, have the notion that they're able to fix things. Like I can fix things. I can make a correction and everything Mm. will go well. I always say that through the beginning of history, of history of, of scientific research, there's never been, it's never been shown that a, a tissue can respond to a single input, let's say a, a treatment input, permanently. It, it just doesn't happen. I mean, the nervous system can respond quickly, but it, it's only short-term. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between short-term potentiation and long-term okay. learning or long-term potentiation. So I always say, no matter what I do as a therapist, I haven't really accomplished anything in one sitting. In order for something to stick and hold, it requires training. So in my mind, as a therapist, I get someone to the point where training inputs are going to be accepted. I see. That's all I do. But I don't fix anything. Training fixes everything. All I do is kind of prepare the canvas Mm. of the body to be able to accept the training. Nice, nice. Um, So it's the training of the joints that, you know, and like you were saying, you assess it. You're like, the first question a trainer should look at is, do they have a joint? Forget everything else. I mean, everyone's always worried about, there's a lot of systems out there, and I don't, I don't like to, to shit on anybody's sure, system. Sure. There's a lot of systems out there who, that are looking at the nervous system, or mm-hmm. what I call the software. And there's a lot of fascinating theories, you know, about facilitation of muscles, uh, and inhibition, and balance of muscles, and this muscle shut off, and this is turned on. Mm-hmm. And I always say that we really understand very little about the nervous system. The software is not something that we understand. What we do understand very well is the hardware, and the hardware is, you know, humerus, glenoid. When you move humerus, does humerus move independent of glenoid? 
unless that happens, if you're trying to correct nervous system function and you're trying to, you know, do a, a, a complicated movement pattern, if a shoulder's not a shoulder, uh, then it's a shoulder. I, I, it's, yeah, it's, I totally. Yeah. yeah, I get you. Yeah, it makes whole sense. So yeah. the first part of training for a trainer is to, is to be able to look at a, a human and say, you know, this is not functioning like this should. And that's a very difficult, I mean, it's not an easy task. You have to learn that, which is which is what I teach at the seminar mm-hmm. at FRC is, you know, let's take the, the ankle. What is an ankle supposed to do? Awesome. What is the ankle doing? How do we make it, take it from what it's doing to what it's supposed to do? And then we can get them training. Mm-hmm. And I think people get confused because they might go on my Instagram and they might see me doing, a, I don't know. Nothing as complicated as you, but they, people think it's complicated. They might see me like doing a revolving bridge or something sure, like that. Sure, sure, yeah. And they go, oh, that's FRC. That's functional range conditioning. That's what he teaches. I always say, no, that's what like Ryan teaches. <laughs> I don't teach any of that. I'm just giving displays of what is possible to do safely sure, if sure. your joints work. And sure. all I care about is do your joints work. And you're talking sure. about movers, for example. I mean my system is, is being used by baseball players – Hockey players, Brazilian gym. jiu-jitsu, yeah, it, it everybody, matter. yeah, everybody. My grandmother, like mm. anybody who mm. who who moves and has joints and functions. I just give people the the prerequisites. Mm-hmm. That's all I care about. I don't care about teaching people how to do handstands. You can do that. Yuval can do that. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not my thing. I I, I might I move around. I can do some stuff. Very but, well. I train as much as I need to train for, for martial arts because that's all I care about. That's what I train for. But And, and you just hit up yeah. another just awesome topic. We can talk about that some other time. But yeah, go ahead. But yeah, yeah keep talking yeah, about that. Yeah, That's that's what FRC is. It, you know, So people, anybody thinking they're going to come to my course or my courses and they're going to learn some amazing back flipping, I'll just refer them to you, dude. I have no <laughs> – like, that's not my thing. My thing is in order to do what you do, how can I make someone do that safely and efficiently so they number one can learn faster because let's be honest if you're learning on a good base with good mobility good stability all things you learn will be done quicker yep yep and number two safely yes can you do it safely and that's all i do you mentioned that you only do enough to make sure that you're able to do what you want to do that's right. And so you train specifically for what you want to be doing. And so I think, um, especially, you know, I don't even know how old you are, but like me, I'm not trying to play the age game or anything like that, but you know, I'm 42 now and I'm very, very happy, very happy with where I am right now. And a lot of people, they send me Facebook messages, challenges. Can you do this? And can you do whatnot? And it's funny because it's, it's, um, I do the things that I do because I want to do them and and I only need to be able to do a certain amount of something to accomplish what I want to do. And I think a lot of people miss out on that. But a big part of it is making sure that my body is healthy enough to be able to actually still do the basics. And so like what you're doing and looking at, you know, the joint integrity and making sure that it is healthy so that I can continue doing the basics so I can do the other stuff I think is so important. And so I guess going back to our original question about, you know, what does it mean to be a better human? Just all comes down to, you know, joint integrity, I guess you could say. Can you use the body in the way that it was meant to be used? So Yeah. It's like can you can you become a generalist? I mean and that's what it is. I mean if you're I think people are confused when when you ask someone what are the goals of your clients mm. for training. I don't know that people really go over these goals all that well because if you say the goals for my clients are to be able to play with their children mm. in a, in the, in the schoolyard on a regular basis, and then you say, okay, let's let's start by doing you know handstands and we're going to do uh, snatches. Like okay nowhere in like let's let's pretend things can be functional i have a real hard time defining an exercise as functional sure. because for me you can only determine if something's functional in retrospect if the movement went according to your plan mm. then you can say oh that was a functional movement sure sure but to say that a a, a snatch is functional and a bicep curl is not is a very confusing yep. thing yep 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 uh because i don't think anybody in in the history of the world ever lifted something like a snatch just to get something about their head. Mm. Like it seems like a very inefficient and dangerous way to do it. 
So if you're not competing in Olympic, Olympic lifting, lifting yeah. I'm not saying, and, and I mean, other sports, snatching is very good. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I'm not saying it's not a useful exercise, but you really have to determine if the risk to benefit ratio is there. Mm. Like, what yeah. are you trying to get out of this? If you take a 40 year old female client and she's like, I want to be in shape. I want to you know, look good, which apparently is you can't look good anymore in training. If you want to look good, <laughs> like, it's a sin. I want to look good. I want to, I want to be in shape. I want to be able to play with my kids. And you say, okay, let's do snatches. Mm. I don't think you're really listening to what they're saying. I think what she's saying is I want to wake up and get out of bed and not feel like I, I'm 80 years old. I want to be able to lift the child up and put them somewhere without herniating a disc. Now, if those are your goals, you know, getting as much weight above your head as you possibly can, as fast as you can, is not going to bring you to that goal. So a lot of times the trainer puts their goals yes, into yeah. their clients. Yes. And, and I mean, you really have to decide if that's really what they want. If that person wants just to be healthy and relatively strong and relatively mobile and relatively this and relatively that, then it's not about cleaning, you know, and deadlifting two times your body weight. It's about getting their joint. Does their shoulder work? No. How can we make it work? And then how can we, um, moving forward, how can we improve the longevity yeah. of that shoulder? Yeah. And I think the word longevity is another underutilized yeah. term. People don't worry about they, – they always worry about how can I make the, the, this basketball player jump higher? Uh-huh. How can I make the, the runner run faster? Okay, but what are you doing to make sure that when they're 40 or yeah. 50, they're not in crippling pain? And, and those are just – instead of being complicated things, it's easy things done repetitively. So yes. we do something called controlled articular rotations, which is uh, – I won't get into the details, but they're rotary-type mm-hmm. exercises that – I prescribe as a morning routine. So I always say that you warm up for your day. So you get up at every day. You've been lying down for eight hours. There's been no fluid motion in your joints. You're, it's stale. Get up. Move all of the joints in your body, and which only takes about five minutes. Mm-hmm. Move all the joints in your body to get all of the stale fluid out. Bring new uh, fluid into the joints. Wake up the mechanoreceptors that you're going to be using throughout the day. Um, and then throughout the day... I always say if you're doing nothing else, pick a joint and move it. So you're saying how do we prevent – we can't go back to hunting gathering days. I mm. get it. But it seems that it's a dose response. The more you move a joint, the healthier it seems to be and the more you ward off degeneration. So one of my major things that I have all of my athletes do, my clients, my patients, everyone is a morning routine of – Articular motions, like you know, your grandmothers do this. They sure. go, I get up, I do my exercises. Right. You know, right. they do these things. They had it right. Get the joints moving. Keep them moving as much as you can. Mm-hmm. And and if there's a dysfunction brewing, learn to recognize it, and then learn to give the right exercises to normalize that joint, and then keep it moving again. So it's easy but difficult, I suppose. Well, yeah, there you go. You know, it's funny you yeah. mentioned, you know, the grandma over here in Japan every morning at 6 a.m. They have what's called radio. It's radio. It's radio taiso in Japanese, but radio exercise basically was this. And they've just been doing it forever, right? And you go to the park and I'll get up really early and take my dog on a walk or something. And there'll be like 100 people out in the park and they'll be doing it. It's kind of like, you know, Tai Chi in China or something like that. But unfortunately yeah. nowadays, hey, you know, we're too busy, you know. Got to wake up and just check our cell phones, make sure we get the latest uh, Facebook update instead of taking care of our bodies, you know, because that's more important. Yeah, I mean, so. that, people would look at that and they go, what are those weird people doing in the park? Right, right. And I look at them and I say, what is that weird person doing commenting on the weird people in the park <laughs> while they're sitting on a park bench on their iPad or whatever? Or eating like, the, you're the weird though. Yeah, not exactly. Them. Exactly. It's like, it's like when somebody watches someone meditating and they go, oh man, that guy's a tree hugger. He's a crazy person. Do you know how much research – is out there on meditating and how good it is for your for you physically and mentally. It trumps almost all research on stuff that we do. But people look at that like those people are crazy. Yeah. And the fact is, is that you're crazy for thinking that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so funny, man. I mean, and that's a big thing too, because you know, me being over here in Japan, it's like it's what I do. You know, it's like yeah. it's meditate, right? And so actually, I'm I'm really hooked on Headspace. Right now, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. It's really great. But anyway, but yeah, man, it's just so – it's it's, uh, it's a guy by the name of uh, Andy uh, – uh, what is his last name? 
put a call, I believe it is. Anyway, it, it's an app that he's got called Headspace.com, yeah, man. I tell you what, it's great. I love it. Absolutely love it. And, you know, it's it's he's looking at more like mindfulness instead of calling meditation because it's just what you said. It's like people have this this thing of, ooh, it's meditation. It's all these hippie yeah. freak guys when in actuality, I mean, hey, I'd rather be chill and enjoy my life than be so stressed out that I couldn't, you know, function. So, but yeah, you know. This is so great what you're talking about, having a morning routine, make, you know, getting up in the morning and doing something that, you know, just five minutes in the morning, making sure that you're starting your day off right. And then throughout the day, rather than thinking about, oh, I need to set aside, you know, this block of time to exercise if you've got time, instead, just move, move your body a little bit, right? I mean, that's well, kind of what tell you, you I know? mean, I don't have a, a study to back it up, but I've, I've, I've seen... A lot of patients in my in my day, you know, and I notice that people who are more dynamic in life, they're more dynamic people. They 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 express themselves with by you know with their hands uh-huh. and they're moving and they're always. I I usually find if I screen them versus someone who's kind of you know just never moves, just kind of sits there. Uh, I, I find that those people who are dynamic have way healthier joints. Mm. And, and, and you shouldn't be surprised about that. Again, sure. people are always like surprised of these things, but it, that's that's how joint health is maintained. So people always say, they'll always go, you know, prove it. Give me the RCT. Give me the randomized control trial that proves that moving more makes you healthier. And I always say that maybe nobody studied it directly, but indirectly, if you read literature, the, I mean, the... It, it just screams out mm. at you, and I'm I'm always one. When I teach my courses, the first one of the first things I say is, <clears throat> "Don't chase literature for answers. Don't look for the paper that will justify what yeah. you're doing. You have to take a bird's eye view, and you have to say, what do humans know from amassing all of the research throughout history, the history of research, and things pop out at you. Mm. For example, if you don't move, things stop moving. <laughs> Duh." Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's you don't brush your teeth, they go away. You don't use a particular range of motion in your life, they go away. Mm. You teach gym, gymnasts, and I always yeah. use this example. I say, if you take, I have three little ones, and all of them are born with the ability to do the splits. Now, when I change my kids, my, my I don't change my eldest, my middle one, but my youngest one is still in diapers, I just take his hips, and I just kind of do ah. some circles, I just kind of, you know, yeah. stretch them out. I don't. I, I'm not sitting there and reaching sure, on them. Sure. People think that, but I always say that if I get my kids to do the splits on a daily basis, what do you think they'll be able to do when they're fifty? Yep. The answer is the splits. Yep. So people think that age kind of sucks away flexibility, and it's like no, you not doing flexible stuff sucks away flexibility. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. got if if you don't do it, it goes away. Yeah, so you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's and it's everyone knows this, but how what how well do we put it into practice? That's the that's the question. Mm-hmm. The same thing with I, I talk a lot about kids because I always make the joke that if you're at my seminar, you're you're old enough that it's too late for you. <laughs> like you've already met, you've already society already screwed you right up. If you want to make a difference, start with your kids. Yeah. For example. You have children, please do not put them in shoes because it's stylish. In my household, we have a rule. No shoes, no socks anywhere in the house or on my premises at all. Why? Because shoes were not part of the evolutionary process. Shoes are a way for to tell your feet, I don't need you anymore. So please start withering away and dying. And then I have a video out on, on foot strength, and I, and I always say, take any patient that has plantar fasciitis, ask them to just lift their big toe, and they stare at their toe, and they just kind of, <laughs> and they're just, they're just trying to make their brain connect, and, and literally, their brain forgot they have toes, because they can't even lift a toe. So I'm like, that's, that's bad, but where do you not see that? People who did gymnastics as children, people who danced as children, people who are martial artists as children, mm. you don't see those problems. And you don't see them too much in Japan because no one wears shoes over here, right? Now, right. interestingly enough, so you've got – so when I went to university over here in Japan, um, the first place I lived, I walked in. It was a dormitory and it was just a squatter. 
You know, it's just the toilet is just that hole in the ground. And, you know, it's so funny because here, when I first came over here, that was tough. I mean, we're not used to that kind of thing, right? But I got used to it. Unfortunately, though, a few years after that, they got rid of all those toilets. And now pretty much everywhere you go in Japan, you have the Western style toilet where you're sitting on the throne, right? So you see kids nowadays who cannot get into squats because they haven't been squatting down for the toilet, which is extremely interesting. Yeah, you see 80-year-olds, 90-year-olds over here who can just get right down into a squat, no problem, stand right back up and just go on with their own business. Just like you said, you don't use it, you lose it. And so, you know, just like shoes, same thing. It, it's, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, it's why constrict, you know, and, and force yourself into a particular compromising position. Everybody does it every day, unfortunately. And um, well, it's like, I always say, if you put, if you were to wear, let's say you wore gloves, let's say you wore mittens for tough. 30 years of your life, for the majority of the time you wore mittens, and then you take the mittens off, how well do yeah. you think your hands will function? Yeah, that's, that's I mean, good. Think of like, that's good. Like you say, you don't, you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, People think of that generally, and they're correct to do so. From my perspective, I think at the cellular level. That's just mm. that's the level that I assess. That's the level that I train and I treat. And at the cellular level, mechanoreceptors, like the little receptors, touch receptors, movement receptors, it's the same thing. If you don't activate them, mm. they go away. A lot of the receptors, for example, muscle spindles, are built into your muscles. So if you don't use the foot muscles and the foot muscles start to wither – with those foot muscles go the receptors. Receptors, yeah. So now you have decreased neurological feedback occurring. It's it's again, it's right there. It's it's all written down. Like it's not like we don't know what to do. It's just we pretend. Exactly. We just pretend that it's yes. not yes. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Because it's genetics. We we're talking about flexibility earlier and stretching. And it's and I, I don't know how many times I hear this, but people come in and the, and they'll, they'll always say to me, they go, yeah, I'm I'm not flexible, and I go, oh, well, how often do you stretch? And they go, never. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, like what do you think was gonna happen? <laughs> you know. What uh, I mean? But that's you want to get into stretching? That's another topic. Yeah, that's I think we need to save that for another time because uh, oh boy, that yeah. we could really do that. Tell you what, man, let's go ahead and end it here. If you're cool, I want to get you. I want to get you back on the horn again so we can have another chat. And, man, uh, man it's been an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Please, please so much well, to talk man. about, man. Tell you what, listen, for all of those listening, I'll be sure to have links up here where you can get more information on the doctor. I just love calling you that, man. And, exactly. um, and also, <clears throat> upcoming seminars, whatnot. Homepage, Facebook, everything, all you need to know. Uh, anything you want to leave us with? I, 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 got, I got nothing. You got nothing? Well, hey. I you got know. nothing. I guess all you can say is just keep moving. I just had to say that. Just, no, no, just, yeah, so keep bad. moving. So bad, yeah. so bad, so bad. Yeah, let, you, know, you know what? Everyone just, just pretend that you're a human. I'm yes, like, just pretend. That's all we have to do, man. That's I know you're above it, but just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's talk soon. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks everybody for listening. My friend. Thanks. For more great info, join us over at gmb.io. And be sure to check us out on iTunes and 